So I have listened to hundreds, if not thousands of podcasts over many years, and these are the 15 best that I have learned the most from or have had my perspective changed the most because of. Let's get into it. Number 15, Steve Jobs once said that the most powerful person in the world is the storyteller. And this person on this podcast is one of the best storytellers that I have ever heard. It is an episode of The Tim Ferriss Show with Cal Fussman. And Cal Fussman is a journalist, and he's got some of the most wild stories I've ever heard. So he was a sommelier in the Twin Towers right before 9-11. He's got a beautiful article about that. He also, when he was young, traveled around Europe with no place to stay, and he would just buy a bus ticket. And then when he got on the bus, he would have to befriend a stranger and at the end get invited by them to come back to their house to stay with them and eat with them. And if he wasn't able to befriend the stranger and get that invite, he would not have a place to stay. He didn't have any money to pay for a hotel or hostel, but he always found a way to get the invite. He's super charismatic, it's great. Number 14. This is one of the craziest stories that I have ever heard. It's this guy, Charlie Walker, on the Joe Rogan experience. So this guy is on a mission to bike around the world. And when he gets tired and needs to sleep, he just pulls over and camps on the side of the road. So he's got a bunch of stories from that, but he was also biking through Russia when they invaded Ukraine. And if you can imagine, they were not then very friendly to any outsiders. And so he actually spent months in Russian prison where they were interrogating him and trying to figure out why he was there because they couldn't believe that he was just choosing to bike through Siberia. So it's a wild story. It's very entertaining. It's very inspiring. 13. This guest is one of the best photographers ever. And then on top of that, he built a $100 million business. So he's kind of done it all. It's episode eight of the Tim Ferriss show with this guy, Chase Jarvis. And if you're doing anything creative, this is a incredible episode. He's got a ton of really good advice based on things that he did in his career. One of my main takeaways was get insanely good at your craft and then charge as much as you possibly can. And both pieces of that equation are very important. Number 12 is Elon Musk on the Lex Friedman podcast. Elon's been on a bunch of different podcasts, but personally, this is my favorite appearance with him. And no matter how you feel about Elon, I know he's kind of controversial right now, you can't deny that he is one of the best entrepreneurs of the last few centuries. The companies he's built and the success that he's had has been incredible. One of my main key takeaways here was reasoning from first principles. And one of the things Elon says in the podcast is that you should study physics. Because physics is basically the only hard and fast rule we have about how things work in our world. Everything else is basically just a suggestion. I would also add that that's that's more for anything physical or like if you're building rockets. But a few other areas that I think would be valuable to learn are economics and psychology, as those are kind of the building blocks of how business and marketing and how people make decisions work. And so those are some other good, good places to start to build from first principles. Number 11. Number 11 is with this guy, Henry Rollins, who I think a lot of people probably have not heard of, but he started one of the best punk bands ever, Black Flag. And then after that, instead of sticking around, he decided, eh, I want to go do other things. So he went and traveled the world. He's a photographer and journalist for Rolling Stone. And one of the reasons that I really love this episode is because it's just about a guy who lived life completely on his own terms. This guy really truly does not care what anybody else thinks and he doesn't let it influence how he lives his life. If he wants to do something, he just goes and does it and he disregards a lot of the other aspects of life that other people consider important just because he didn't care for them. He's also got an insane work ethic and it definitely rubs off on you in the episode. Number 10. There's a really great line in the song, Damn It Feels Good to Be Gangster, and I'm kind of paraphrasing here because I can't say the whole thing, but they say, real gangsters don't flex nuts because real gangsters know they got them. And I've always been fascinated by this type of person who is just an absolute killer at their craft. They're amazing at what they do, and you never hear from them because they're not out talking to people and giving speeches and going on podcasts. They're just executing. They're just doing the thing that they love to do. And this episode is about one of those people. It's from the podcast Founders, and it's about Stephen King, who is without a doubt one of the best writers of all time. He's top 50 in books ever sold, which is crazy. And so this episode is the host of the Founders podcast, read his book, his memoir, and then talked through it. 
And one of the things I love about it is that there is extremely little fluff in both the podcast and the book. I've read the book as well. It's very solid, but the podcast kind of gives you everything that the book has. That's why I like it. And it's a great look into the world of this amazing writer who just says, here's what I did. Here's some things that I think would be helpful. That's it. And one of my favorite quotes in there was, reading takes much time and the glass teat takes too much of it. And what he means by the glass teat is TV, but I also thought it was very pressing talking about our phones and our modern world today. Number nine. I believe that specific examples are the key to learning anything. When you're learning algebra, they have principles of algebra and often your teachers will tell you those, but the way you actually get good at it is they give you a bunch of practice problems and you go through each practice problem and you solve it. And once you solve a bunch of them, you start to see some of the patterns and you see how it all fits together. And personally, I think a lot of the information out there today is just teaching about principles without diving into specific examples, which I think is a shame. When it comes to business though, there's one podcast that does a great job at teaching the specific examples, and that is the My First Million podcast. And this one is a little bit unique because this is the most consistently great show on this list. So you can really jump into any episode and it will be pretty good. This one I have here is one of my favorites, but it's less that you need to listen to this exact episode and more just the podcast in general is really great. Number eight is an interview with a guy who I think is today's version of Arnold Schwarzenegger, and that is Chris Bumstead on the Modern Wisdom podcast. So if you don't know, Chris Bumstead is now a five-time Mr. Olympia champion, but I really like him because his, his mindset and his approach to health and fitness in general, in addition to just bodybuilding, as well as his open-mindedness to new ideas all really stand out. And he's the type of person who is very quiet, but also very confident. He doesn't try to draw a lot of attention to himself. He just says, here's what I've done. Here's some things I've learned. And that's it. He's not overly showy. One of my key takeaways here was that it's not a weakness to ask for help. It's actually a strength. It's a strength to know when you need help and be willing to seek it out from people. Because Chris talks about this with kind of a breakdown that he had in his career. Number seven. Number seven is an episode with a tech CEO who you will probably know. But the thing that initially caught my attention and made me respect this person was something that they did in 2016. So this was right after the election and Trump had just been elected. And this person said, I don't understand why everyone voted for Trump. I don't get it. But instead of like everyone else saying, oh, it's because people are racist or they're bigoted, he said, I'm going to try to understand what made people vote for Trump. And so he went on a road trip across America and he went into a lot of red states and he went to these little small town bars and he met people and said, hey, I'll buy you a beer if you're willing to sit with me and tell me about why you voted for Trump. And he just sat with them and talked with them and then he wrote up an article afterwards with some of the, the reasoning. And this person is Sam Altman, who's probably best known as the CEO of OpenAI, although he was also the former president of Y Combinator. And in my opinion, Sam is basically the next Elon Musk. He is an incredibly driven and smart and kind entrepreneur. And I think we're gonna be hearing a lot more about him in the next few years. And this episode is just a great pinpoint in time of you getting to see him as OpenAI is growing, as AI is becoming more important and see how he thinks, how he looks at the world and what he thinks the future of AI is gonna be like. It's quite cool. Key takeaway here was take more risk and don't worry what others think of you. Most of the risks you're worried about aren't actually that big. Number six. The guest on this podcast is, in my opinion, the closest definition of mad genius that I have ever seen. And it is episode 1518 of the Joe Rogan Experience with this guy, David Cho, who is an artist, but he's also done a bunch of crazy stuff. So he hitchhiked across America. He actually dropped out of high school, I believe, to do this. And he just said, I want to go travel, see the world. So he hitchhiked across America. Then he went to the Congo to look for a dinosaur and he got lost in the jungle of the Congo and almost died there, but didn't, made his way out, has a crazy story there. Then there was also this thing that I heard a long time ago, which is that when Facebook was just getting started, they hired someone to paint a mural in their office. And at the end they said, okay, we can either give you cash or we can give you stock in our company if you'd prefer that. And the artist said, okay, I'll take the stock. 
then you know what happened with Facebook and it blew up and that artist's stock was then worth $300 million. And that artist was David Cho. And I had no idea about that connection until later on down the line, but this guy has lived just a wild, crazy life and his brain works so differently than anyone you have ever met. It is so fascinating. He's very strange, but it's fascinating. Number five, we are now down to the top five. Every once in a while, you will do something that completely resets your frame of what is possible. Maybe it's a book you read or someone you listen to or an experience you have that just makes you look at things differently. And for me, this podcast did that. It is the Colin and Samir show interviewing Mr. Beast. And even if you don't care about YouTube, Mr. Beast is an incredibly talented and driven entrepreneur, and there's a lot to learn from him. I'll give you two examples of things that he did that completely reset my frame. So the first is there's a point where he's talking about the importance of ideas for YouTube videos and how they're so important. He spends a large part of his day just coming up with ideas for videos. All that's, you know, fine, plain, whatever. But then he talks about how, because it's so important, he taught himself to lucid dream so that he could come up with ideas while he's sleeping. And that is just wild to me that he went to that extreme length. Another one is one of the ideas he came up with a video was to be buried alive. And he said as soon as he thought of this idea, he knew it was going to be a really big one and they had to make it happen. The issue though is that Mr. Beast is very claustrophobic. But instead of just using that as an excuse and giving up, what he did is he built a large box, put it in his garage, and every night he would go to sleep in this box to build a comfort with being closed in this box. And then as he got comfortable with that one, he would go to a smaller box. Then as he got comfortable with that one, he would go to an even smaller box until eventually he got to a box that was the size he would be in for this video. And so it was like three weeks that this guy was sleeping in a box in his garage so that he could make a video that he knew would go viral. And that's just insane. That's just like the, the, the drivenness, the intensity there is so wild to me. So that was the key takeaway is you can turn up the intensity. Okay, number four. Number four is one of the greatest business teachers around today. And it is Alex Hermosi on the Modern Wisdom Podcast. There's a bunch of podcasts with Alex on them, but this is personally my favorite episode. There's a couple of key takeaways for me. So one is that if you have nothing going for you, it also means you have nothing to lose. So there's really no risk of failure because you've got nothing to lose. And that was very freeing to me. The other one is this idea of this is what hard feels like. And he talks about if you're going to do anything special in life, if you want to be a writer or start a business or even just climb the ladder at your company, you have to know that it's going to be very hard. And most people know that when they get started, but the thing is we forget it as we get going. Then you get a couple months into starting your business and you go, oh man, this is so hard. Why does it feel like this? I'm stressed out all the time. But what did you expect? You signed up for this. You knew what you were getting into. And so what he says is to remind yourself, this is what hard feels like. You knew it was going to be hard. This is just that playing out. And so it resets the expectations of what things should feel like. And it makes it so that you have more drive to keep going because this is what you knew was going to happen. Number three, we're now down to top three. So there is one history podcast that is widely regarded as the best history podcast ever created. And in my opinion, this episode is the best episode of that podcast. And that is Hardcore History, The Wrath of the Cons. So technically, this is actually a few episodes, it's a, a series. But like I said, amazing podcast, the host, Dan Carlin, incredible. But the Mongols were absolutely insane. The stuff that they did and how skilled they were with horses and archery and strategy for taking over cities was incredible. The lengths that they went to was wild. Like at one point, they controlled an area that was as far east as you can go in Asia, so into China, to the coast near Japan while they were also simultaneously fighting the Roman Empire. Like, they, they had so much land. It's crazy. Great episode. It'll blow your mind. It's nuts. All right, number two. There's a quote from Warren Buffett that I really like where he says, don't ask a barber if you need a haircut. 
And the idea is that you need to be careful about the people who are giving you advice if they have an incentive to push you in a certain direction. So obviously a barber is going to tell you you need a haircut because he'll make money. And similarly, there are a lot of business people out there who are trying to sell courses or books or have some product that they're shipping. And that's why they're giving you the advice. But the person in this episode is not like that at all. They've already made their money. They're already very happy. They are very successful. And now they're just sharing what they know. And that is Naval with his episode, How to Get Rich Without Getting Lucky. So a while back, Naval did this tweet storm called How to Get Rich Without Getting Lucky. Then he made a little podcast explaining each of the points. And this is putting that all into one. And it's one episode where he teaches you every single thing that he knows about how to build wealth. In my opinion, he's one of the clearest thinkers of the 21st century. And this is everything that he knows. Number one. I don't even really know what to say about this podcast, but it is incredible. It is episode 98 of the Jocko podcast with Jordan Peterson. There's so much good wisdom and discussion and knowledge here. There's one specific section called where they talk about being dangerous but disciplined. That is like my favorite segment from a podcast ever. It's incredible. So listen to this. It's great. If you guys want to listen to all of these, I will put a link in the description that'll be a Spotify playlist with all of them in order so you can find it there. Otherwise, thanks for watching.